Arpeggion Sonata by Franz Schubert is such a beautiful piece of music. It's one of my favorites. The Arpeggion was a really strange instrument that was invented in the 1800s while Schubert was alive, I think, and um, wasn't used for a lot of pieces, but Schubert somehow wrote this piece for it. After that, it was transcribed for a lot of instruments. It's a really big piece in the cello repertoire, a huge piece in the viola repertoire. Violinists play it, clarinetists play it, flutes play it, a lot of instruments play it. There's a reason for it. It's because it's beautiful. And if you're studying, it can actually help you do a lot of things with your music. So let's talk about a few of those things. First thing, bowings. How does a musician develop bowings? for him or herself? Well, I think of options. Today I chose to play this Boeing. Another Boeing I've seen people use is to start up bow. That's nice too. Pinchas Zuckerman, the great violin and viola player, plays a lot of things starting up bow like that, and I, I do the same. It's a wonderful way to start because it grows to the second measure. While the first version with the down bow starts at the first measure and kind of goes down towards the second measure. I have a preference for the second because that eighth note at the end of the first measure can be sculpted at the tip of the bow. Like that. The downfall of that bowing is that when you start up bow, I have a whole bow to go to that while the other way I have to distribute my bow a little bit more with a little bit more craft. Although I still find that to have a nicer melodic feeling for me. I've also seen a lot of people play with two bows in the first measure. I think before there were so many editions available to us, the edition that most people used, which was the international edition, ten, has, has that two bow structure in the first measure, and so most of the people would play it this way. So let's listen to all three ways, and you decide which one you like better. first way. That's the second way. And how about the third way? You can make a comment down below and tell me which of these ways do you like. The next measures have kind of a rise and fall to them. Again, with fingerings, there's many ways to do it. One way, you don't have to shift. Out of that, we can decide, well, maybe that's a little boring, maybe that's not how we like it, so where can I shift? Well, you can shift up. You can put a little slide there. There's two ways to slide. You can either play this way or I think in this music we can do that shift where you start on the note, go into the position, and put the finger down expressively. 
We'll talk about that in a minute. So that would sound like this. <laughs> talk about putting a finger down expressively there's really several ways that you can place your finger on the fingerboard I'm gonna move over here so we can really see the left hand um, instead of putting your fingers down hard when I put my fingers down hard like that it's really hard for me to adjust my pitches, A, and B, it comes out sounding a little on the hard side. So what I try to do is to put my fingers down very soft. On your fingers, you have these pads, and you can feel the string. I talk a lot about the senses. As we all know, we have five senses. I use three of them to play the viola. I use touch, I use hearing, and I use seeing. One thing that musicians don't think about a lot is the touch one. We all know that we can look, we can look at the music, we can look at the, at the fingers, we can look at the, at the sounding point of the bow, but we also can really, really feel the instrument. I think of my fingerboard as being kind of a Tempur-Pedic bed, kind of a foam bed, where my fingers touch and they just sink into the bed, or a sponge like that rather than some sort of a hard piece of wood and metal strings like it is. I try to have the image of a soft bed there. So that way when I play like that and I'm touching gently, first of all, my fingers are gonna loosen up and they're gonna have a softer quality and the sound will be more vibrant. <laughs> probably can see that. If I play with a harder finger action in my left hand, it sounds like this. As you see, I'm struggling when I'm shifting because my fingers are down so hard that when I have to shift, it jerks like that and I can't control it. So again, that softer version. makes it much easier for me to play and sounds lovely. The next phrase I try to play all on the D string. Like that. When I move my finger from one to one, be careful. No gooey fingers there, so I practice. You try to make it that your fingers, whether they're the same fingers sliding on a half step or whether you're fingering it, sound the same. So this and this should sound about the same. I don't think that was very successful. Let me try that again. better. I imagine that there's molasses or honey on my string and my fingers stuck to it and then when I make the shift it's stuck but then it lets me go if that makes any sense. Honey keeps my sound vibrant. When I play this really careful. That 
I vibrate every single note, especially when I'm practicing. I talked before in other videos about how when you practice slowly, that you try to vibrate every single note and the residue of the vibrato stays there. That way the sound is still vibrant. Now we get to the top note, the E. So I'm gonna really rise to the occasion that I'm going to the top here. There it is. It's really fun to get to the top of things. Like when you're climbing mountains, you get to the top. That's what we do it for, I guess. And then try to stay there as long as you can. You come back down. Let the piano play it for a while. Then, gra then gradually crescendo. Get to another top. Then... Get to the end of the phrase. That's a real Schubert thing, this turn. Schubert uses this in almost all of his pieces. So you come from the top, think a little bit, and finish. One time someone gave me a really cool fingering for that that I didn't use this time, but it looks like this. So the fingering is three, one, stretch the second finger, three, two. You notice even when I'm demonstrating and playing slowly, I vibrate all the notes and the, vib the vibrato comes right from that fingertip. So let me demonstrate those two fingerings there. First fingering, A string. Second fingering. That's another good place to write down there on the comments which one of those you like better. Okay, this is Pinka Zuckerman. Let's see what he has to say with the beginning of the arpeggio. See the bowing there, starting down bow. There's that shift. Very beautiful, sustained sound. He likes to hit those high points with an up bow. A lot of shifting there. Yura Lee is a wonderful viola player and a great violin player too. She plays everything down bow. I love how she pulls the notes through. That's a silky bow change right there. Beautiful growth of note. Interesting bowing there too. Here's Tabea Zimmerman playing the Arpeggio Sonata. Let's see what she has to say with it. One bow per measure. Oh, interesting bowing there with the down, up, up. quicker tempo too. Beautiful playing too. As you see, there's so many ways that you can play different, the same piece. After that, we get to this kind of playful feeling here. And 
I think of it as being one person. Next person. People together. Little variety. Together again. This has a melody like that. When you hear that, what is that? Well, that's so. Playing on that melody, mysterious. Come in with hard sound with the piano. To make sure all those notes are clear, so I practice very slowly. the trill from the top here. Trills are like gems. Without the trill it sounds like this. So you practice one you practice without the trill or the turn. I think two there. Then you add the turn. So here go to there. Then the trill is just a little ornament on top of that. I think I can do that better. I tell everyone this, but I don't know if it's true, but my teacher told me this is the most beautiful part of the piece. So, in homage to Mr. Linzer, I try to play that as beautifully as I can. That's a really easy place to play out of tune, so go slowly. We have a playful, light, free, fun thing. When we play the same thing many times, try not to play all of them the same. So I try to make a crescendo diminuendo thing or something. These are hard to play. I hear a lot of... So if you think of the, of the quarter note in that measure, as a really singing note, I think it really, really helps. Some people do this. Gives you a different color. I usually don't, but sometimes I do. The sound of a harmonic can give you a lot of color, it's just you can't vibrate it. When you 
play these, put a smile on your face, I guess, so that they sound happy and bubbly. I really love this warm sounding place. Again, typical Schubert. The scale here. To me, that's a little journey traveling up the mountain to the top. I've arrived and I keep going. Super turn. Again, you play the same melody here. I play an octave higher and always trying to sing and adding variety to my repeated notes. to get down to the C string. I think everybody knows by now that I love the C string. Well, which viola player doesn't? But try to show the beauty of the C string when you get there. My fingering is like this. One. One again. Stretch my third finger. Slide my third finger. Like that. When you practice, practice legato with vibrato. how I keep my finger on the other string down when I cross string. Shift. And I still play the same tempo when I play the slow notes. And then another Schubert ending. Then warm, rich, velvety. play the pizzicatos, I play from the side of my finger, and I let it over the fingerboard, vibrating, letting them ring. 